Good morning, it's Tom Johnson, along with our mayor, Sue Kemp. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Tom. Good to be with you today. Another edition of Fair Game Laguna. Yep. Some things happening around town. You know, one of the things I was thinking about the other day um, is, is the coyote season. And I, I was checking, you know, coyotes have their breeding season that's kind of uh it, it it's not a hatch like a duckling or anything like that but they have their puppies now during the next few weeks everything it starts that season where we really need to be cautious in the community what's the community doing about uh, coyotes and taking precautions well you know it's it's you really have to be on guard um so you know you don't certainly don't want to feed them and if you you know go outside at night you need to make sure you have your lights on in your yard and um, don't leave them out there unattended and, you know, keep your dogs on a short leash. I've, I've known so many people. I used to live up in Bluebird and a lot of coyotes up there. Coyote walked in the one of my friend's back screen door and took the dog. And he caught it and the dog, it dropped the dog. The dog was okay. But, I mean, that kind of stuff is pretty brazen and it happens a lot. Yeah, well, when you read about, you know, what this season is for coyotes is... Basically, there's a there's a dominant male and female. They have the pups. Everybody goes out in the hunt. All the rest of them go out in the hunt. So they're aggressively looking for food. And people, right. a lot of people don't think that, oh, you know, they think, oh, I have a, a fence around my backyard. I'm protected and everything. Coyotes can go over fences. Coyotes can go places that you don't think they can. And even having a, 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 a pet on a leash is not necessarily all that safe you still have to stay on guard right i saw a sign somewhere in town i can't remember where it was i want to say it was coming down Thalia. i don't know if that's right or not but somebody had a sign out saying hey watch out the coyotes are out during the day so, yeah. yeah it's scary there we're definitely in in their area and we're sharing it the other night at council you um presented a plan on the promenade promenade right. uh, why don't you tell us uh, the next, what, what you submitted and what the next steps are and then how the community could get engaged with that effort. Right. So we put uh, together kind of a broad plan. Um, Mark Orgel and I are the subcommittee. We're an ad hoc committee. And we have originally we're going to have a kind of a bake off with th three selected design firms to give us different options. And then when Mark and I were appointed, we decided, why don't we just use SWA because they're in town, they, they have an office right there on Glenary, and they know the town very well. And let's use some of our local talent because we have so many talented people, you know, landscape architects, architects, business people, people that work in the arts, and let's just use our own people. And, you know, it's a, it's a you know, it's an interesting project and it's not a super long street. I think we can handle it just fine. So we're going to have focus groups that are going to be uh, probably consisting of a lot of the, the experts in town, whatever the particular category is, whether it's architecture, landscape architecture, um, you know, the arts, business people. And then, so we're going to take those people and then we're going to, we're going to form a resident focus group. All these people, by the way, are already residents. <laughs> But we're going to have just another group um, that we're going to be consulting with, and we're going to ask for uh, people to submit, and we'll Mark Orgill and I will make the selection. We're going to pick seven people. Right. So I think we you know all in all, our you know our our plan I think is really solid, and I think it's going to work well. Um, I'm look, really looking forward to it. We have um, you know we have some challenges there. We, the, I think the biggest challenge is we just need to make sure that the design works for everybody. Well, the thing I like about it that you're tapping into locals to do it is, yes, it is surprising the kind of talent we do have in a community like Laguna Beach, number one. But number two is these are people that are going to be engaged with it for the long haul. You know, their name is kind of, in a weird way, is going to kind of be attached to it. Yeah. So they have more of a vested interest than just hiring some firm that's located in some other town that comes into town does what they think is right and then they move on to their next project right exactly so should be good uh speaking of other things that are are happening i saw where we're planning for the fourth of july and we're looking at doing something a little different right. and i think anytime change comes 
You know, you got to cross your fingers and hope that it works out the right way. But what the city council did the other day is when they were allocating their money for the fourth, they still want to do a show for the community, but they decided to put money to not only fireworks, but to drone shows, to a drone show. And drone shows have become extremely popular, but they do come with, you know, a risk or two. What are your thoughts on that? Well, we voted 5-0 to have a drone show rather than a fireworks show. And it's driven a lot by kind of environmental factors because, you know, it does produce a lot of smoke pollution. It's not good for the environment. We all know that. Um, you know, it's we've been doing it for decades. Um, but we decided this year that we'll do a drone show. And the only problem with drones is, you know, along the coast, it can be windy sometimes. Usually not on the 4th of July. It's not really, really windy, but it can be kind of foggy. You know, we get coastal fog come in, and that that might be a problem. Um, but I've seen them myself out in the desert, like in May, the May or June time frame, where you know the desert weather is very predictable at that time of year. It's you know more warm during the day, but it's also clear at night. So when they launched the drones, it was really it's a cool show. It, it is very very cool. I'm just hoping that the weather cooperates for us so that we can have uh, you know a good display. the The drone show lasts about 15 minutes, and they put up 300 drones. Um, versus, um, you know, a traditional fireworks show where we put up, I think, 870 fireworks in 12 to 15 minutes. So it's the They're completely it's different topical. things. But the drone shows I've seen have been spectacular. But you're right, you know. But any anything brings risk to it, you know. I mean, if you look, if you stand back and look at it, um, you know, the drone show is completely different. It's much safer for a town like Laguna mm -hmm. Beach with with fire and things like that. So I think it could be very exciting. I, I hope that, uh, you know, residents um, sit back, take a look at it, and maybe comment afterwards like, yes, I loved it. I'd like to go back to fight, whatever it is. Yeah. But, but give it a chance, and hopefully it'll work well. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's it, it'll be fun to see. It'll be really fun to see. I'm hoping the weather cooperates, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. I'm totally for it. I just hope everybody else likes it as well. Well, I, I think one of the things that does it does is it um, go, it, it, it works into uh, what we need to do to prevent fires in this community, you know, and what, you know, what people don't realize is one misguided firework can cause a lot of damage right and no, it's, it's, i think the risk i think the risk with fireworks is not so much along the coast what we typically do but it's on the fourth of july we always tell people no fireworks don't shoot off any fireworks and every year i mean i've lived in the hills pretty much since i've lived here and every year people are shooting them off in the hills i mean that's yeah. the thing that scares me the most not the controlled fireworks per se yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but i think the uh you know, definitely for the fire for the Fourth of July, it's uh, it's an issue. Yes, primarily with residents. So, what does the city start doing now? Because the rainy season, and as I say this, it's gray skies over, and you know, it's kind of a kind of that drizzly feeling. But it is going to get warm. It is going to get hot, and we've had you know massive rainfall, and with that comes more growth. Right. which increases the fire uh, odds and things like that. What is the city doing now or thinking about doing to prepare us for fire season? And what do you recommend residents do? Well, first of all, um, the goat, you know, the goats are out because <clears throat> you're, you're right. We did get a lot of growth. You can see it everywhere. If you drive around the hills, you see, you know, a lot of growth everywhere. So the goats are out. They're busy. They're doing their thing. And I don't know what their schedule is off the top of my head, but they're definitely out. And then we have our field mob zones that we work. We have I think 20, I can't remember, 27 of them or something in town. We work those. Um, we also do moisture testing in the hills. So we go up and um, test the vegetation every, I don't know, I think it's every month or something for the uh, moisture content in the fuel. And that gives us an indication, you know, you know how dry things really are. Um, so we do that and it, you know, we're just basically, you know, on watch. It's people just need to be careful now, um, especially, particularly on hikes. I think the residents are primarily fine, but you can't like, I've seen people smoking in town, walking on the trails. 
they're, I don't think they're residents and I always tell them not to smoke. And I'm, you know, one of these days I'm going to get punched out for that, but um, people won't like that. Let but, me know. That'll make a great headline in two yeah. <laughs> And you can imagine the photo, yeah. but uh, yeah, and people know not to do that. And, you know, people need to, you know, use common sense and have a, have a go pack ready. I mean, I have two of those that I bought from the disaster preparedness committee. The city has them for 50 bucks. I have two of them go pack in my, in my garage. So I can just pull it out and put it in my car. So you just have to be prepared. You have to have an exit plan, um, but we do, you know, as much as we can, you know, we have, the refillable water station on, you know, up on Moulton. And then we're going to have two more from the respective water districts. And they may be almost up and running now. But, uh, you know, we've done a lot uh, for fire mitigation and fire safety. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, we have a good and, and easy fire season. So I think, you know, the good thing about it is our fire department is ready to roll. Hopefully they won't be called. But... Right. If they are, they'll be ready. Yeah. Anything they, else on your docket this week? Oh, I have a lot to do this week. <laughs> um, when yeah, don't you? Yeah. Well, we have, you know, uh, I'm going to speak at the Board of Realtors on Friday about housing uh, at the Rivian Theater. Uh, we have our, you know, our annual employee picnic is tomorrow. And then I just have a lot of other, you know, council meetings and busy things to do. Well, great. You know, the community appreciates your commitment. I know it's, uh, it's an added life to the one you already try to lead, uh, but we appreciate it. And that's another week of Fair Game Laguna. Sue, thanks so much. Get out there, uh, hopefully, and enjoy some decent weather. I will. I think the sun's out today, Tom. <laughs>